Welcome to our nation's capital. Week two of the NFL season. Today from RFK Stadium, the Phoenix Cardinals challenge the Washington Redskins. And hi, everybody. I'm Jim Nance, along with Randy Cross, the former All-Pro lineman with the San Francisco 49ers. And we welcome you to RFK Stadium. You know, last week, Philadelphia beat the Cardinals while on Monday night, Washington demolished Dallas. And we saw the return of Mark Rippon to Super Bowl form of two years ago. Well, this is a quarterback offense. They need Mark Rippon to play well. When he plays well, they win. In fact, I think if they go 3-0 and into this first bye, they're going to win the NFC East. Well, the Cardinals have lost 14 straight years here at RFK Stadium in the last three years, really ugly losses. Combined score of 106 to three the last three years. They're hoping that Steve Berline will be sharper than he was last week in his debut for well, the Cardinals. Well, Jim, a couple of those games have been an insult to ugly games, but Steve Berline says, Joe Bugle told me I left the hook at home. I won't pull you early. And Berline says there's no possible way I could play that as bad as they did last week. Look for Garrison Hurst to make his first start critical. The Cardinals must run the ball 35 times at least to win this game. It is a beautiful day. Chip Miller will kick to the Cardinals who won the toss. Johnny Bailey misjudges it. He'll have to run it out from the goal line. Open room for Bailey. Bailey getting to the outside. Past the 40 and written down from behind at the 46-yard line by Johnny Thomas. One of the strengths, <coughs> strengths of these Cardinals is the special teams. And Bailey, a pro bowler last year as a returner, just picks his way through. How many times do you see a return where it's delayed like that, suddenly the coverage breaks down, and a returner with this kind of ability like Bailey has can really bring it back? We had a flag on that play and a couple yards at it. Desmond Howard combined with Thomas on the tackle. Garrison Hurst on first down, and the rookie breaks free to the 41 of the Redskins. Daryl Green on the tackle. Steve Berline last week ineffective. Played only the first half of that game against Philadelphia before Chandler replaced him in the third quarter. His offensive line today, a change from last week. Sharp at left tackle. May moves over to left guard. Cunningham at center. Smith and Rick Cunningham. Hurst gets his first NFL start. Clark and Prohl are the receivers. Reeves and Butch Roll join them also. And there's another five for Garrison Hurst. Hurst last week had seven carries for only three yards, but two good carries in this game to begin week two. Now the base defense for the Redskins, Collins, Johnson, Eric Williams, and four-time Pro Bowler Charles Mann on the line. The linebackers, Monty Coleman in his 15th year with Gouveia and Banks, and the secondary, Green, Edwards, Copeland, and Johnson. Edwards had three picks here last year against the Cardinals. Second and five, and Hurst tries the left side, and this time... Only about two, Monty Coleman and Daryl Green combined on the hit. One thing Garrison Hurst, if you have to say work on something, I'm sure the coaches are saying, Garrison, when you make a decision right now to run, run. Don't hesitate, don't break stride, accelerate and go. The bodies are moving too quick at this level. They're not going to run by you like they do in college. Third and three, they brought in Randall Hill as the third receiver. Johnny Bailey is the lone setback. Bailey has the first down as he explodes to the 25. Lance Smith with a good block to clear him inside. Now there's a lot of things that different running backs can do. You talk about Hurst, you talk about Moore, you talk about Johnny Bailey. Watch this move right there. The average running back doesn't make that move. Bailey's a guy that can make people miss when they're about two feet away. That was a great move. I mean, not even a miss, Jim. That was a complete Nolan Ryan, no hit, nothing. <laughs> hey, they are moving it here on the first series. Fifth play of the drive from the 26 of the Redskins. First down. Burlines first throw, and Gary Clark, the former Redskin, leaps into the air at the 16. And you notice, you're going to see this all day, Daryl Green usually goes with the best receiver from the opposition. Gary Clark coming into Washington. You know these Phoenix Cardinals want to give him the ball. Watch at the very end of this play. After Clark catches this ball, Green gets a little bump leg there, starts to make a wish. 
pulls, yanks, twists them a little bit, <laughs> just trying to get into Clark's head a little bit right now. He pulled them down about a half yard shy of the first. Second down and one. Butch Roll lines up as the fullback out of the eye. Somebody had to jump. Hurst in the middle, inside of the 10. But flags everywhere. was a great example of how defense number 58 is offside penalty is declined first down first down as they'll decline the offside penalty against the Redskins but the burst the speed of first you really saw it come through right there exactly and if you had a word of advice you know Garrison watch Johnny Bailey you saw Johnny Bailey burst the line of scrimmage and make that move burst and go don't think first and goal from the eight they have not scored a touchdown at RFK Stadium in the last three games here. Threatening on the first possession of the game. First and goal. First. Monty Coleman drags him down, but flags everywhere. That's one of two things. That's a quick face mask, which I think is what it is. You see the indication. Garrison Hurst stopped, got snuffed a little bit, tried to break it out. You're not going to get outside those linebackers. Face mask, five yards, number 51 of the defense. Must get back to the line of scrimmage. Still first down. Jerry Austin is our referee today. Watch Coleman, 51. He's the one that gets in the backfield. Hurst wants to get outside. We actually got a little uh, face mask. You got a little mouthpiece. You got a little chin strap. So uh, for five yards, for five yards worth, Jimmy you got a little air there. Pretty good deal. Didn't leave much behind. The Cardinals are spreading this offense out real well, giving Burline a chance. First to the three. Charles Mann on the tackle. Garrison Hurst again last week. Seven rushing attempts for three yards. He said after the game evaluating his play, I think I played okay, but I think the films later disagreed with that assessment. He had a couple of good runs, good quick little runs, but he was not alone in the backfield most of the game last week. Philadelphia was all over him. What Phoenix needs to do is just what they're doing. Run the ball, get her some confidence. Don't put the load on the quarterback. Make it a team offense. Second and goal, Hurst. Reaching for the goal line, and the Cardinals think he's in, but he's half yard shy. Banks and A.J. Johnson on the tackle. Joe Bugle's 50th game as the head coach of the Cardinals. And this is the kind of start Joe Bugle said they had to have. You know, you have two different types of teams. Cardinals hope they can win. Redskins assume they will win. Third and less than a yard to the end zone. They fake the Hurst in the middle all kinds of time. And now Berline just throws it away. There is a flag in the end zone. There were at least two flags came in right after that great fake. That was a fine fake. Most rookies won't do that. 12 men on defense, half a distance to the goal, repeat third down. See, Richie Pettibone doesn't think a whole lot of that. And, you know, what Phoenix doesn't need as hard a time as they've had scoring the last few years against Washington is for Washington to start using 12, 13, 14 guys against them. And, and <laughs> that makes a difference. Phoenix, for the last two years, has had a hard time getting that one yard. Back to a game last year against the Eagles. Last week, they failed on a critical third one. Here's third and goal, and Hurst stacked up, did not get in. Brad Edwards and Carl Banks stood him up. Watch the leap of Hurst, but also watch the line surge. Are the red jerseys under the white jerseys? No. The white jerseys are underneath the red ones. They can't get in. You can't get room to jump when your linemen are standing up in front of you and people are diving up over here. Look at Govea, what a great play. Airborne face shot. They're gonna go for it, fourth and goal. What a huge play for the Cardinals. Fourth and goal and Hurst, not even close.
Kurt Gouveia on the hit. The Cardinals get all the way to the door, but they can't go across it. This was an all-pro play by Kurt Govea. Watch the hole that opens up right there and how he closes it. Watch this. Big hole, big gap. Here comes the lead blocker, Butch Roll, and Govea just snuffs it. There's nowhere to go. There was a huge hole. Fine job by the rest of the Cardinals, but Roll couldn't get Govea out of there. Ripping in the Redskins from the two, we'll call it. Ryan Mitchell for no gain. Tyrone Stowe met him at the line of scrimmage. Here's Mark Rippon. He threw three touchdowns last week. 22 completions, only 161 yards. But the new distribution on this offense, you won't see those big 300-yard games like that. They used to be. Elvin Nevy at the left side with Brown, McKenzie, Shilarath, and Simmons. Biner and Mitchell, Sanders, McGee, Ron Middleton coming off a career game Monday night. Second and nine. And Mitchell this time to the four. Ken Harvey on the hit. Here are the young guns of Phoenix with Davis, Rucker, and Swan all over 300 pounds. Freddie Joe Nunn joins them on the line. The backers are Stowe and Harvey, and in the backfield, five of them in their base defense with Lynch, who scored a touchdown last week. Cecil Booty, Williams, and Dave Dewarson, who comes into their big nickel package. Second or third down, third down and eight. From the end zone, out to Biner. He never had possession of it. That's sort of the new role of Ernest Biner. Get a little bigger, running him out of fullback, but he's become the third down guy. Ricky Urbans, who held out, is now the third team halfback. And Biner's sort of taken over this third down job, and he's normally a very sure-handed receiver. You saw the ball get to his hands. And he looked upfield and didn't see it all the way to his hands. A longtime Miami punter, Reggie Roby, making his Redskin debut, signed this week. They cut Kelly Goodburn after the Monday night game. Two time Pro Bowler with the Dolphins. Guy Bingham will snap it to him. Low driving boot that will be run back by Bailey into Redskin territory. Bailey inside of the 40 and to the outside. He only has to beat Roby. Johnny Bailey for a touchdown. Well, that brought a smile to the face of Joe Bugle. 58 yards for the Pro Bowl punt returner of a year ago. Jim, there's two things that get punter cut, punters cut. One is shanking punts, and another is low driving kicks that gives the returner the quality of Bailey 20 yards before any of the, the tackles were around him. That was a perfect return kick. Roby has always been known for his height and his hang time. He better get it. Davis for the point after. 7-0 Phoenix. Their first touchdown at RFK Stadium in four years. Nance with Randy Cross midway through the first quarter. 7-0 Cardinals on Johnny Bailey's run back. Punt return for a touchdown. The Redskins normally after a Monday night game. Awesome. 20 and 2 in the last decade after Monday night. The following Sunday. Two tight ends in the game for Rippon. Is that a fumble? They're going to rule it an incompletion. Boy, that was a late, late whistle. And Lorenzo Lynch ended up with the football at the goal line just as a week ago. Yeah, for the second week in a row, Lorenzo Lynch ends up in the end zone with a ball that we'll see. Was this a fumble? Is his arm going? Well, his wrist was going forward, but it was being grabbed. I think he was actually getting that arm going forward, but he was grabbed from behind by Mike Jones. Mike Jones and Michael Bankston collided on the quarterback. Second and ten. Middleton with Dewarson on him. 
Brings it down at the 26. So we'll set up third at about four. We have an update for you. So we send it up the coast. Back to you, Greg Humble. All right, Jim, we'll take you to Lambeau Field in Green Bay where Reggie White is already making his presence felt against his former teammates. Watch Reggie chase down Randall Cunningham, strip the football, the Packers recover, and halt the Philadelphia drive in the first quarter. They're scoreless. Jim? Thank you, Greg. Brian Noble recovered that for the Packers. Third and five, Art Monk has come in for Washington. Looking for Tim McGee. So the Redskins two series and they have failed to pick up a first down. And a nice adjustment there by Fritz Schirmer's defense. You could hear, you could hear Mark Rippon going to the going to the flash Dakota, flash Dakota, giving the hand signals. That usually means there are fake audibles, but in an audible situation like that, the defense has to adjust. Because the formation isn't usually telling them what's really going to happen. Let's check out Roby. With his second punt as a Redskin. Got to have hang time. Well, this one also can be run back. Bailey from the 18. Tackled at the 24. Danny Copeland came down to make the tackle on special teams. 7 0, Phoenix. The football they drove all the way to the Redskins one and failed to punch it across. What do you expect we'll see from Phoenix on this series? Well, you're looking right there at one of the original hogs, Mark May, now playing for the Phoenix Cardinals, and they need to take a, a page out of Joe Gibbs's old book when Joe Bugle was here. Run, run, short pass. If you can get Gary Clark on a play action long, take it. Otherwise, be very, very patient and don't overpressure your quarterback. Hamstring pull for Reggie Roby. Burline and the Cardinals from the 24. Looking for a screen, cross the middle first. Good tackle. Danny Copeland. He made the hit on the punt coverage a moment ago. And Danny Copeland wears the same number as his counterpart on the other side, Chuck Cecil for Phoenix. And he had Hearst number the entire way. You talk about closing on the ball. Here's closing on the body. Watch the missile from the right. Right there. Helmet. That is why you wear thigh pads. You see that helmet right on the thigh pad? Ron Moore has come in replacing Hearst. Second down and seven. Gary Clark. Darrell Green with the one-on-one -on -one tackle at the 30. He's set up third and about four. Look at the cushion Darrell Green is giving Gary Clark. I know it's design. I know they don't want to give up big plays, but they will take this with Gary Clark all day until Washington decides to take it away. Washington doesn't want to get beat deep, but Gary Clark will get 12 catches if they keep playing off in that far. Of a third and three. Clark already with two catches. That's a first down. Ricky Prohl at the 38. A.J. Johnson defending. Prohl did not get a lot of attention last week against Philadelphia. He caught only two passes in the game against the Eagles. Well, he's been labeled kind of a possession guy, but Ricky Pearl's got speed. I think he can beat people deep. But a great thing about that play right there was Pearl came underneath a clear out by Gary Clark. Green was up tight on man on man. Clark cleared him out, pulled it right underneath. Moore stays in as the running back, and here's this rookie's first carry of the game. Carl Banks drags him down at the 40. Moore was their leading. Rusher in the preseason and last week in the opener. Rookie out of Pittsburgh State. A year ago he gained 2,500 yards and scored 39 touchdowns for Pittsburgh State. And, and he and Garrison Hurst are part of kind of the, the new breed of running backs. You know, 5'9", 5'10", 215, 220. Everybody wants an Emmett and a Barry. Are these guys Emmett or Barry? Well, a couple years will tell you. 
Second and seven. Burlines hit his first four passes. And that one a little too steep for Pro. Football floated a little bit, Randy. And that, that was the first out of the mold pass that Steve Burlines thrown. And the mold being quick, precise, high percentage passes. That was an opportunity to drop a ball behind the zone and try to get Pro. I think Pro, if the ball was a lift another foot lower, that's a completion. He has those kinds of hands. Al Noga and Bobby Wilson have come in on that defensive front for the Redskins on third and seven. Burline fires it wide open as Clark back into Washington territory at the 40. Rookie Tom Carter defending gave him way too much room. That's a 19 yard play. You know at some at some point you have to come off that word respect. You have to respect a, a receiver like a Gary Clark. But look at this area they're giving Gary Clark. Burline is going to just look at that and say fine Gary do your thing come up short run them long push them off we'll take those 15 16 17 yard gains Clark's third catch for 32 yards first down Moore up the middle about the 36 tripped up by Bobby Wilson and Shane Collins well, the, the stumbling, bumbling Cardinal offense that was featured last week in Philadelphia is not here. This is more the one they ended the preseason with against Denver two weeks ago. They're using a very good running game, and they're not doing anything real fancy with the passing game. They're giving Steve Berline some confidence passes, and they're really pumping up the confidence of this offensive team, if not only the entire Cardinal team. Eighth play of the series, second and five. Moore, great run. What an opening for him as he gets to the 24-yard line. Another first down. Could you believe the gap on that one, Randy? Well, you want to see a gap? We'll take a look at this. Check this out. Watch the defensive tackles here and here run up the field, and then watch where the ball carrier goes. Here goes the defensive tackles. Hey, guys, it's the little guy, number 30, with the ball. Get him. Of course, I got to be honest, the offensive linemen were kind of holding those defensive tackles, but there wasn't a flag, so it wasn't holding. Moore getting a lot of work. Carl Banks greets him after a one yard run. Richie Pettibone told us that Carl Banks brings leadership, tremendous leadership to this team. Banks, a member of two Super Bowl championship teams with the Giants. And I think, yeah, honestly, Jim, in this point of Carl's career, he is a real outside linebacker in a 4-3 defense. There's a difference between a 34 speed guy and a 4-3 slugger. Carl is a good 4-3 slugger. Wilbur, he's better off being down in a 3-4 with Buddy Ryan down there. That's a 3-4, it's a 4-3, it's a 4 ever that he's their buddy defense. Number 2-3, Hurst has returned on second and eight. And Shane Collins was in Burline's face along with Banks. It was actually Banks that was right there to meet the quarterback. Collins was defending and deflected the pass. And one of the things that Carl Banks can add from the outside is just a little bit of aggressive push. You know, Washington outside of Charles Mann hasn't had a two-man rush in a very long time since Dexter Manley was here. People gang up on Mann and let him try to rush with everybody else. Big play for Steve Burline. Third and eight. Randall Hill in. Johnny Bailey in. Burline trying to get away. Can't do it. Monty Coleman. And he may have driven him out of field goal range. Well, they'll still try one from over 50 yards. Well, there's a certain degree of escapability most quarterbacks in the NFL have to have, but. When you're being subjected to a jailbreak like this, you've got Coleman, you've got Wilson, you've got guys crawling all over you. I don't care if you're Steve Young, Joe Montana, Randall Cunningham, whoever, you're not getting away. A beaming Greg Davis, a new papa as of yesterday. He'll try a field goal with 53 yards. It would match a career long. And he got it. His wife, Shauna, gave birth yesterday 
to a six pound baby girl Savannah Caitlin he did not arrive in Washington till eight this morning. Well Greg uh, sleep less kick more often <laughs> if you're going to kick them that high that hard and that straight you know this uh, game uh, night before the game sleep was kind of overrated for Greg Davis I think. 53 yards matching a career long. 10 nothing Phoenix with 23 seconds remaining in the first quarter. How surprised are you. Uh, I'm very surprised. Uh, I, I think Phoenix has come into this game and sort of taken it by taking control of this ball game. What they've what they're saying on the sideline right now is hey you know I think we can win this game. Now Washington on their side by the same token is still saying hey don't worry about it. There's plenty of time. We're going to win this game. And if you hear the difference there. Washington says they're gonna. Joe Bugle and the guys are saying we think. Can they? If they keep rushing the football like they have against the Redskins in the first quarter, they have to like their chances. Well, 60 run yards rushing in the two series. If you're had. running the ball like that, Jim, and then the team, your defense has held the Redskins to seven yards on six plays. Mm. That's kind of the formula for success. I'd say. Here's Davis angling the kick. To Howard from the seven. Former Heisman Trophy winner fails to make it to the 20. So final seconds of the first quarter dominated by the Phoenix Cardinals. Redskins still looking for their first first down. Just remember one thing Mark Rippon and the Redskins won't panic. The question is will Phoenix get a little too excited you can not be a young team get too excited about being ahead and then make a mental mistake that cost you points. Monk is in three receivers for the Redskins Monk lined up in a slot to the left on first and ten. Ryan Mitchell over a hundred on Monday night. This time a gain of about two. That will run out time in the first quarter and by the way that kick by Davis not only matched a career high career long but is also the longest field goal in Cardinal history 10 nothing Phoenix at the end of the first quarter. Jim Nance along with Randy Cross back at RFK Stadium and Randy really the momentum for this game started right with the opening kick when Johnny Bailey broke free later he returned a punt for the touchdown and also an early turning point was Phoenix not getting down when they got stopped four shots down deep didn't get any points they didn't panic what they did do was take a Reggie Rowe punt back with Johnny Bailey for a touchdown so Joe Bugle's got to be excited but he's been in this stadium a lot of times as a Washington assistant when these Redskins are down. Remember what he said yesterday he told the team there's no mystique with this field I've been on it 2000 times I'm telling you if you think there's a mystique about RFK Stadium you're dead wrong. Well he, he made the comment he says I cut guys from this Phoenix Cardinal team that didn't think they could win in RFK. Second and seven for the Redskins to start the second quarter. They play action fake into the line ripping to Monk. Great catch across the 40. Twenty yard gain on that one. You need a jolt. You need a pick me up. You need something positive. There's only one guy to go to. You go to the receiver that has caught more than anybody else and who now has caught one pass in one hundred and fifty games in a row. He now ties Ozzie Newsom at one hundred and fifty straight. Steve Barton has got that record at one hundred and seventy seven. First down. Reggie Brooks rookie running back from Notre Dame scoops to the 48 yard line. Schloreth helped clear the way for Reggie Brooks who looked outstanding in the win against the Cowboys. Well, I, once again Jim another burst back. You know, Washington for years had the power guy. The Riggs and the Miners and the, the Riggos. Oh John Riggins that just kind of blasted people. Now they've got some guys with some wiggle. Second down and four. Quickly, Rippin was intended for Ricky Sanders. Aeneas Williams on the coverage. 
And the Cardinals would love them to keep trying to throw those kind of passes. Those aren't high percentage, especially when you have a cornerback of the ability of an Aeneas Williams all over your receiver. By the way, in that Saints lead of 10 nothing, Morton Anderson has set the all-time NFL record with his 25th straight field goal without a miss. Ernest Biner into the game for Washington on third and four. Rippon out of the pocket. He'll run for it. Oh, is his head almost ripped off by Eric Swan. But Rippon got the first down, and I believe he's hurt. And that's got to be something down in his lower legs. When you get bent around like that, you can get a knee twisted around very, very easily. And he is in some serious hurt. This is not the situation Richie Pettibone wants his quarterback Mark Rippon in. Watch here. Oh, boy. Could be that right ankle as it got caught underneath him when he got put down on the ground. But you, know, you want Rippon in the pocket. You want him throwing. You don't want him out there running because that's when things like this happen. Eric Swan hits him, brings him down, and rolls on that leg. Washington, as a city, is holding their breath. Rippon was helped to the Redskin bench. And they're looking in the area of a knee. He'll be replaced now by Kerry Conklin in his fourth year from the University of Washington. And they went into this season figuring Conklin was going to push Rippon for that starting quarterback job. Mark came in, had lost some weight, and Kerry really didn't perform up to the standards I think Rod Dauhauer and the offensive coaches expected here in Washington. But, you know, Rippon came off, wasn't putting any weight on that leg. For right now, at least today, Kerry Conklin would seem to be the man. And if you're wondering, after Conklin, the third quarterback for the Redskins is Rich Gannon, the former starter with the Minnesota Vikings. And there's Rich Gannon, first and ten. Conklin comes right out, firing long. And Lorenzo Lynch was closest to it. Ricky Sanders was the receiver in that area. This game started with a big kickoff return by Johnny Bailey to near midfield. Phoenix drove to the one but did not get in. And then Johnny Bailey ran the punt back 58 yards for a touchdown. Greg Davis has added the longest field goal in Cardinal history, Cardinal franchise history, 53 yards. And it's 10-0 Phoenix. First two minutes of the second quarter. Second down and 10 to go back to Brooks. Tries to high step it over a player at the goal at the line of scrimmage. And then knocked back by Eric Swan. And that would be the biggest improvement from last Sunday to this Sunday. This Phoenix Cardinal defense has made. The middle of this defense is not being gashed. They got split open last week by Philadelphia. They're just sitting solid. They're two gapping. They're stuffing them. And there is nowhere for, to run right now for the inside running game. Third and 11. Washington has rushed for only 15 yards. Miner in the backfield. Conklin. That's Ricky Sanders near a first down. I think Watch the pass. Jim, watch the pass protection here and watch the blitz pickup. And watch the coolness of Kerry Conklin. He sits, he sits, and just he just little dump off to Sanders. But the guy that bought him the time was Ernest Biner, number 21. Got a nice block on Braxton, 54. Watch Braxton, the linebacker. Whoa! Well, a little bit of a tackle, but it was a good block. Fourth and less than a yard. Mitchell will not get it. The young guns come through for Phoenix. Chuck Cecil came over the top and made a big play for the Cardinal defense. Garth Jacks also. So Pettibone goes for it on fourth and one, and the Cardinals deny. They lead 10-0.
You've got Garth Jacks coming this way on a good play. Watch Chuck Cecil, the Pro Bowl pit bull for the Phoenix Cardinals, just stuff this up. Look at that hole, or look at that non-hole. Great job by Jackson, Jackson especially Cecil. First down, Burline. Going long, but no one there. Clark got held up a little bit in traffic near the 40. Cecil shook off two blockers to make the first hit on that fourth down play. And how about Burline today? What do you think of the way he's playing? I tell you, I, I love this last play. I mean, it, it didn't do anything outside of deliver a little of a bit of a message. You know, we've got a little killer instinct. We're, we're, we're willing to go for the juggler. A lot of teams that run a running play, run a little dink play. Steve Burline and Joe Bugle and the Phoenix Cardinals said, hey, why not take a page out of Washington's book and go for the throw, go for the big one. Second and ten. Ricky Prohl. Daryl Green got a hit on him, stopped him from getting a first down. One thing we haven't seen since that goal line stand of the Washington Redskins is this Redskin defense making something happen, getting a big play. You know, it's said often there's five, six, seven big plays in a game for each team. So far, the big plays have all been for the Phoenix Cardinals, especially offensively. Third and five. Larry Sinners has come in for the Cardinals. Here's Johnny Bailey, first down Phoenix, and back into Washington territory. Ten-yard burst for Bailey. And another good example of a running back making somebody miss. Brad Edwards, number 27, is going to come in here, and he's got a beat on Bailey. He's going to smack him. But Bailey doesn't let him. Bailey sidesteps. He does trip him up, but he doesn't take the hit. Two good rushes. Sterling kick return and a punt return for a touchdown for Bailey in the first half. First and ten. Hurst trying to get away from man, and now he'll throw it. Randall Hill never looked up. Here's Brad Edwards with the interception. He had three against him last year here. And Edwards returns it to the 42-yard line. Was he supposed to throw that football? He sure thought so. Randall Hill didn't think so. But I just got done saying it, Jim. This is the point where the Redskins make a big play. A Redskin veteran defense takes advantage of a mistake. He's got it tucked. He looks like it's a sweep. But everybody in front of him is pass blocking. Everybody is pass blocking except for Randall Hill, who's run blocking. And he doesn't have a shot. He doesn't have a clue. He doesn't get near him. And Brad Edwards doesn't do an awful lot but make big plays and make things happen. He's one of the fine free safeties this entire league. Conklin. Hands off, and Brooks is buried in the backfield. First was Mike Jones. We have a report now from the Redskins on Rippon's injury. They are telling us that Rippon has suffered ligament damage to his right knee and will not return today. That is a huge... That is a huge bandage. That is a huge play and a huge injury for the Washington Redskins. The Redskins need Mark Rippon to be successful. Will not be back today. Second and 13 and maybe even longer. Conklin to Middleton for only about four yards. It'll be third and nine. David Braxton on the tackle. You said the play where Rippon was injured running for a first down may end up being one of the biggest plays of the whole Redskin season. If that's a bad ligament injury, it will certainly be the, you know, the early turning point of the year. I mean, Mark Rippon is the guy here. He's one of the top, oh, probably six, seven quarterbacks in the league. They have got to have him. Third down and nine. One of the reasons you got to have him, he's used to this new 40-second clock, and he's not going to get you to delay a game penalty. 
before the snap. Number 64, false start, five yards. It's still third down. So the Redskins add a sink. Mark again, he's up and he's walking around with that thing on his knee, but I, don't be deceived. I have had knee injuries where you could walk around on it, and walking around and playing football are completely two different things. Redskins so far today, eight runs for 12 yards. They face third and 14. Great drop back, Conklin's pass batted down. And it was Eric Swan again, disrupting things. You watch what Eric Swan does here. He draws a line straight through Mark Schlereth into the quarterback's face. Look at this. Come on, we're going back to the quarterback. Mark, want to come? And he pounds that ball down. Good bull rush. Something Swan's added. He's always been a good bull rusher. Now he's got a little wiggle for a defensive lineman. So look for him to put an arm over on Schlereth later. Roby, remember we saw him with a hamstring pull on his left leg. He's had one run back for a touchdown. There's Bailey back to the 11. He had to retreat. And he scampers to the 25. James Jenkins on the tackle. 50-yard punt, 14-yard run back. Phoenix, 10-0. And let's tell you our lineup next week. It all starts at 12.30 with the NFL today that many of you will see the Redskins against Philadelphia. The Eagles have won 10 straight at home. They'll return to the bet next week. Others will watch the Rams at the Giants, the Lions against the Saints, or Atlanta and the 49ers. And Jack Kent Cook talking to Charlie Casserly during that timeout. And the Cardinals on first down and out to the 30-yard line. Garrison Hurst for a run of about five. Saw that shot of Mr. Cook and Charlie Casserly talking. You you got to think one of the questions in that conversation was, well, if Mark's hurt bad, who's out there? Who's available? What quarterbacks are available? Jack Kent Cook, one of the real class winners in the NFL. He's a guy that wants to win football games and is willing to do almost anything for his organization to have a winner. Second down and five. And first. Lost a couple that time. The rookie has carried it 11 times in the first half. 11 times for 33 yards for Hurst. Well, after last week's start of seven for three yards, that three yards of crack sounds pretty good right now. And you know, don't ignore the great job this Phoenix Cardinal kind of patchwork line is doing right now. They're doing a fine job against Washington. Third and seven. Pressure on Burleigh. Spins out of it. He has the first down. And that's one of the things Burleigh does add as a quarterback for Phoenix. He doesn't mind doing that. He'll get out, he'll run around, he'll spin, he'll do what it takes. He's not the, the pure drop back quarterback, let's say that a Mark Rippon is. He is a guy that's much like one of his backups, Rich Gannon, the number uh, three guys, three guy at Washington, number two guy now maybe at Washington can do. He can run. He can get out there. First down for Phoenix. Back to Hurst, getting a lot of work. Charles Mann had a hold of him. Irvine and the Cardinals much improved in one week. He told us I'll never have a game like that one last week again. I let a lot of people down. No one to blame but me, myself, and I. And you got to be impressed with Burline and his Phoenix Cardinals team's composure. They haven't let negative plays like interceptions and goal line stands affect them. Second and nine. Screen to Hurst. To the outside pass, Banks. Diving near a first down at the 48. Now this is where you want Garrison Hurst. If you can't free him up inside, get him outside, get him the ball, 
and let him get out there to his right. Watch him scoot and slide. You haven't got a chance if you're a linebacker like Carl Banks of catching a little motor like that. He'll run right away from it. The third pick in the draft last April and the last draft pick of 224 to sign with an NFL team. First and 10 and Hurst met by Danny Copeland at the line of scrimmage. That's probably the best way of dealing with running backs that can wiggle and burst and speed and fast and everything else. Get in the backfield and hit them there. Under five minutes remaining in the first half. 4.38 before halftime. 10-0 Cardinals. 58-yard punt return by Johnny Bailey for a touchdown. 53-yard field goal by Greg Davis. Longest in franchise history. Good time for a Gary Clark type play, Jim. He's the kind of guy that makes these plays on second and third long. The three receivers in there, second and 12. He was looking in Clark's direction. There he is, inside of the 30. Needs a block by Hill, and he lost his footing at the 18. He did it for a lot of years here in Washington. He's doing it for Joe Bugle and the Cardinals now. If you need the play, you need a little jolt, you need a little enthusiasm, you throw it to number 84, get him the ball, let him go. He's, he's going he's gonna to hate watching that film, Tim Stumbling, but he's going to love watching his quarterback. Look at Burline, steps up, makes the throw, but will not go down. But Gouveia limped off the field after he hit the quarterback. That was a 36-yard pass play. Ron Moore. Moore still on his feet. Look at the rookie. Into the end zone for a touchdown. And the Boo Birds are out in Washington. And you do not hear boos very often here at RFK. But watch Moore pound it into here, and then do one of those slides and squirts we talked about. We talked about Moore, we talked about Brooks, we talked about Hurst, but watch this. Hit, hit, slide, go. There's the slide, and there's the six. Nice run and very good blocking by his lineman up in front of him. Davis adds the point after. Ron Moore has his first NFL touchdown. capital where the Redskins have been shut out of the first half Steve Berline a born leader is what Louis Sharp told us about signal caller for the Cardinals well, he made a great comment that he walked up to Berline on Wednesday and was what Berline's walking through the locker room Sharp comes up and goes you know I like that you're kind of walking with that swagger still we've been keeping an eye on you figuring to see how that bad performance would affect you and it definitely has not affected him this week or today First and ten. First. There's a nifty move to make it to the 20. Berline said he had trouble sleeping Monday and Tuesday nights, but then Wednesday he said we're looking straight ahead. He, he's the guy this organization and this team has to look at. He's the, the leader, the guy that got the big bucks as the quarterback, and he accepts that. It's very unusual to see a guy that basically kind of says, Keep it on me. I'm the one. I should get it. And if I play bad, I deserve the blame. But you also got to turn around on a day like this and say, I don't know if Steve Burline can play a better first half. Second and five. 120 remaining in the half. Clock running. Burline zips it. Where had it go in and out of his hands. And the Redskins almost came up with it. A.J. Johnson was reaching for it. It's one of those sort of bang, bang plays. Bang the ball gets there and bang, so does the defender. Bang off the chest, bang into the chest, there goes the ball, never even close to a possession. Carl Banks smacked the receiver pretty good. There's Ware, he'll sit out this play on third and five as they bring in Larry Sinners and Johnny Bailey and three receivers. The 
Irvine to the 15 near the first down to Larry Sinners, who caught a touchdown last week. I think that forward motion is going to give him a first down. He was past the 15 yard line. They've actually marked it right on the 15 yard line, which should give him a first down. Phoenix has called a timeout. They have two remaining with 59 seconds left in the half. Has to be the most gratifying half of football in Joe Bugle's 50 game career as head coach of the Cardinals, number 50 today. And coming up at halftime, Greg and Terry will have all the scores and highlights, and Tim Ryan with a preview of the men's final at the U.S. Open, which you'll see later today on CBS. Cedric Pialin against Pete Sampras. And here's Joe Bugle and Steve Berline. You know they're thinking about one thing. Let's not change anything. Let's keep going with the stuff that's gotten us here. Throw a quick slant to Clark. Get the ball into Ricky Prohl's hand. Keep pounding the ball. Don't look for anything unusual. They love a touchdown here, but the last thing they don't want to do is not get points here. If you're Richie Pettibone and the Redskins, you have got to make a big play here. I mean, no ifs, ands, or buts. You've got to make a play here. They had enough for the first down with the pass play to centers. So from the 15, Berline looking left. Goes back to centers. Only a one-yard gain. Kurt Gouveia knocked him down. And another key play by Kurt Gouveia. He's a, he's a linebacker that was a situational guy in his career early. You know, he'd play second down and third down. Then he'd play third down. Then sometimes he'd play first down. And now he's the guy in the middle. And all he really does is get around the ball. Second and nine, under 30 seconds to go. That was Johnny Bailey. The Cardinals called their second timeout with 25 seconds remaining. 17-0 Cardinals on a punt return for a touchdown, a run by Ron Moore, and a field goal by Greg Davis of 53 yards. And this leaves the Cardinals in a situation with the timeouts, as you see, three for Washington, one for Phoenix. The Cardinals are in a situation here. They can take their shot in the end zone. You want to get the ball to a Gary Clark. Give him a shot out over the cones, out in the corner. Throw it where only Clark has a chance to get it. If you don't get it, you put Greg Davis on the field, you take three points, and you go in 20 to nothing. One story that Bugle shared with us yesterday, when he was named the Cardinals coach, his beloved hogs invited him over for a farewell dinner over at Joe Jacoby's house. He went down into the basement. They all had their hair slicked back, Phoenix Cardinals t-shirts on, and they presented him with a gold bracelet with their names and numbers inscribed on it. He said uh, one of the most meaningful moments of his life, he'll take that bracelet to the grave with him. Now back to this situation at third and eight. Irvine looks to Clark, and he's picked off. And look out, this could be run back. Tom Carter. The rookie is out of bounds across the 40 to the 45 yard line. 39 yard run back, first interception of his pro career, rookie Tom Carter. Remember what we said, Jim, you take a shot in the end zone if you're Phoenix. If you're Washington, something's got to happen. And who makes the play? Is it a vet? No. Nah. The rookie out of Notre Dame. Carter steps in front, makes his play. Big return, big play, and a big momentum swing. This game was getting ready to get extremely ugly for the Redskins. Now it really doesn't matter they're down 17 0. What matters is they're not down 20 to nothing, and they're not down 24 0. Remember those points at the end of the fourth quarter. They say Carter stepped out at the 35, 14 seconds remaining in the half. And the Redskins will go up top. Ball thrown in the area of two Cardinals, Braxton and Williams. That really didn't go up top as much as it sort of went in the basement window. It was kind of a funny pass. It was well inside and low. You're just joining us, Mark Rippon was injured early in the second quarter. 
ligament damage to his right knee will not return today. Kerry Conklin is the Redskins quarterback. And after looking so good Monday night, this Redskins offense is only 63 yards on 22 plays. There's a last ditch effort to throw it away and they say Conklin was sacked and give the sack to Ken Harvey. Well Ken Harvey last week said how do I feel better coming off this knee injury. What's the big turning point. Well the turning point is getting me some sacks and here's some sacks and that could have been another quarterback down for the Redskins. You saw the legs trapped underneath in Harvey's body. Time has run out on the first half. Richie Pettibone's Redskins trailing Joe Bugle and the Cardinals 17 to nothing. And if you're in that Redskin locker room, boys, you bring your earplugs and your thick skin. Because Richie Pettibone and this staff for Washington is going to be doing some serious ripping of these Redskins. Look for them to come out steaming in the second half. Seventeen nothing Cardinals. The first half like they haven't experienced in a long time. It's into the first half. Again, the score is seventeen to nothing. The NFL Today Dockers halftime report is sponsored by new loose fit Dockers. Nobody does pants like Dockers. Those of you watching the action in Washington, New York, and Green Bay, welcome back to our studios here in New York. He's Terry, I'm Greg, and let's run down for you the scores, beginning with the action at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, where Reggie White has had a heck of an afternoon so far against his former mates. Yeah, the fans wanted to see some action. We'll get to him in a moment. Brett Favre on the rollout to Sterling Sharp, who has five catches already today for 60 yards. But what a show Mr. Reggie White's putting on. Reggie White coming inside. Forcing his second fumble of the day of Cunningham. That's his second forced fumble. And also, Mr. White has two sacks, Greg, already in the first half. Got to find out where he is on that line. 10-7, Green Bay leading by a field goal. In Washington, the Redskins and Joe Bugle. Joe Bugle comes back to the Skins, and Reggie Roby's first punt is a Redskin. Big problem. Watch Johnny Bailey. And this is something the Redskins are known for. That's great special teams, but not now. Here's a guy that has been throughout his career one of the very best at returning punts, Johnny Bailey. From the Bears to the Cardinals, touchdown. Meanwhile, Mark Rippon gone for the day. Ligament damage to his right knee. Don't know how severe it is yet. Harry Conklin has come on to sub for him, and he is 3 of 8 for 32 yards in the first half. Fumbled once, sacked twice. Redskins could be in trouble here. Cardinals lead at 17 to nothing. Now, in the Meadowlands, the New York Giants with a 17-7 lead over Tampa Bay at halftime. Phil Simms looking good. Up top to Howard Excellent. Cross. Excellent job. Notice Phil went to the left for the first receiver down the middle for the second, then found Howard Cross, who ran a flat and down the sideline wide open. Excellent job by Sims. The lone touchdown of the day for Tampa Bay so far. Craig Erickson, 17 yards to Ty G. Armstrong, but the Bucks can't run the football. The Giants have 116 rushing yards to just four for Tampa Bay, and the Giants lead at 17-7 at halftime. In Houston, the Oilers and Kansas City, the Chiefs playing without Joe Montana. The Oilers lead in the second quarter, seven to nothing. Warren Moon, a two-yard touchdown pass to Curtis Duncan. Dave Craig, five of 12 for 81 yards, subbing for Montana. The Saints lead Atlanta, 24 to seven in the second quarter. Morton Anderson setting a new National Football League record in that game with his 25th consecutive field goal. The Bears and Minnesota are at halftime. The Bears lead the Vikings 7-3. Jim Harbaugh, a quarterback sneak for a yard and a touchdown there. New England trailing Detroit, now taking the lead over the Lions by a score of 9-7 as they approach halftime at Foxborough. Willie Clay returned a fumble recovery 19 yards for a touchdown for the Lions only TD in the opening kickoff. And at halftime in the Cincinnati Bengals hometown, the Bengals and the Colts are tied at 3. And the NFL today continues here on CBS after this word from your local station. Well, many felt this might be a blowout today, but no one expected it would be in this direction. 17-0 Cardinals. Jim Nance along with Randy Cross back with you here at RFK Stadium. And, and Randy, the first half numbers all belong to Phoenix, so dominating in every facet. This is an offensive line coach's dream and a defensive coach's nightmare. Richie Pettibone, I said before, has got to be going nuts in the locker room. 
Bugle's got these guys settled down. They're saying, hey, look, they don't have their quarterback, and that's a very, very big thing. I mean, look at the rushing figures and the time of possession. Uh, two to one, Phoenix, in the time of possession. Two plays, though, that uh, really defined the first half in many ways. One was the injury to Mark Rippon. And this is just pure and simple. Rippon trying to make something happen, gets out to make some yards. And Eric Swan comes in and rolls over that right knee right there. It's been described as ligament damage. And Ron Moore makes what I think was the big play. Phoenix already up 10-0. But at this point, I think Phoenix started to believe they can beat the Redskins in RFK. Washington will get the football to start the third quarter. Greg Davis will kick. To Desmond Howard and Brian Mitchell. Desmond Howard from the three. Good run back to the 30. Steve Heisch made the tackle. Kerry Conklin. Sacked twice in the first half, fumbled once. Fourth year from Washington. When he took over as the quarterback of the Washington Huskies, he replaced a graduating Chris Chandler, the backup for the Phoenix Cardinals. And Kerry Conklin needs one thing right now, and that is confidence in himself and I think confidence from his teammates. He's got to go to the passing game and the running game and get something going. Ken Harvey drags down Brian Mitchell. Ken Harvey forced to fumble, had another sack in the first half. And he's adjusting this season. He's been made an inside linebacker in this, you know, big, heavy, nickel, huge, jumbo, bunch of guys, whatever they call it in Phoenix. <laughs> and, and he's having to run from the inside on the running plays, but his forte is coming at you on the corners on the pass. Second down, we'll call it six. Into the flat, and Monk couldn't reach out enough for that one. And that's the kind of pass pattern that the quarterback has to throw the ball to the receiver. You hear the turn coming back to the ball. The receiver can't go back to the ball when he's running at that angle. The quarterback has to put that ball on the receiver's hands. Eric Swan has been spectacular in this game. Third down and six. Ricky Sanders first down and into Phoenix territory. Well, two things happened on that play. One, Sanders got a nice catch. Two, Conklin got nailed right there by Freddie Joe Nunn. And here goes Sanders, just like Clark. You want a receiver like them in the open. But what you don't want is your quarterback getting a, getting a helmet sandwich right in the mouth like that. You've got to protect your quarterback, especially in the middle. First down. Back to Sanders, smothered at the 45 by Stowe and Booty. One of the unknowns and variables at this point of the game is you know Washington is a veteran poised group. You know they won't panic. The question really goes over to the Phoenix side of the ball. Phoenix needs to keep their momentum, keep their enthusiasm up, and their concentration peak. Their concentration has been extremely impressive. Their poise has been impressive. They've got to keep, keep the pressure. Second and seven, here's Brooks. Brooks dashing through the middle. And a first down at the 32. An 11-yard run. And this is just one of those pretty runs. Nothing fancy, just pretty. Move, scoot, go where they aren't. This is the deepest penetration of the game for Washington. From the 32 of Phoenix. First down, Conklin. Art Monk. Met head on at the 25 by John Booty. And a nice drive by a Kerry Conklin in this Washington offense. When you really have to, you buckle down 
and you start concentrating, you get the ball to Art Monk, and you start getting first downs. First downs are important at this point. Points would be nice, but they need confidence. And you take a look there at the number one gun here in Washington, Mark Rippon, in that bad knee. Second down, three. Mitchell straight ahead, first down. They move the chains again to the 20-yard line, goes Mitchell. Mitchell, one of only two running backs, opening week to rush for 100 yards. His figure of 116 tops week one. First down for the Redskins. Rolling out, Conklin. And to McGee on one hop. Washington with 14 straight wins over the Cardinals here at RFK. Now the Redskins, I was going to say, Jim, have a lot of history, a lot of tradition to draw on. This is only the second game, remember, of the Richie Pettibone era here in Washington. They want to emphasize very, very little change. With the Joe Gibbs teams, they could come back from these kind of things. The coaches have to make the adjustments to help the players. Well, the Cardinals want to make an adjustment during a timeout. The Cardinals used one here in the third. Of that power tennis game. I love seeing those bullet serves. I mean, Sanford's been in this final three of the last four years, so off experience, you might want to pick him. Well, he's he's definitely poised to win his second U.S. Open title. Now the Redskins are they poised to score for the first time today, trailing 17 nothing. They have second and ten from the Cardinal 20. Conklin Harvey coming after him. Here's the pass intercepted in the end zone. John Booty, he'll run it back across the 10 to the 16. And Ken Harvey helped make that play for the Cardinals as he got to Conklin about the time he was releasing it. And Richie Pettibone is seeing his Redskins pay a, play a Cardinal team that last week wasn't making the plays, was looking very uncertain. Not this week, they're aggressive. They're attacking, and when they need a play, they're getting a play. Two big plays. One, Ken Harvey getting all over Conklin. Second big part of that, because the pass was short, John Booty gets the pick. John Booty gets Phoenix's second turnover. Free agent signed to the offseason from the Eagles. Garrison Hurst. Trying to break to the outside, just gets back to the line of scrimmage. And I'll tell you what, he did a heck of a job getting back to the line of scrimmage because he had to evade about four or five Redskins to get there. Well, that sure put an end to the momentum that the Redskins were trying to work up to begin the second half. And here's the key to the Redskins momentum. It's going to be Kerry Conklin and how he leads his team in the second half. They've got to get touchdowns. We'll call it second and eight. And Hurst to the 23. It'll be third and about four. Brad Edwards took his legs away. You talk about a back like Hurst, and one of the things he does well is he can start going this way, and he can end up being tackled and running over here. Watch this. A play designed to go to that in that direction. It's going left. It's almost a sweep. But look where he ends up. He goes down all the way back over where the line, the umpire was standing. He comes out now on the passing down with Johnny Bailey at the lone setback. Third and four. Ball is open. First down, Cardinals at the 30. We talked to Ricky Prohl yesterday and asked him to describe what kind of player he is. And he said, I, I think I'm a player who hasn't reached his full potential and one who is probably underrated as far as speed goes. Interesting combination of uh, boyhood idols, Jim. You, you expect a wide yeah. receiver to say, you know, Paul Warfield or Lance Allworth or one of these great wide receivers, Jerry Rice. He goes, well, my two idols were Walter Payton and uh, Harry Carson. 
the Harry Carson a linebacker? Well, he was a huge Giants fan, was Ricky Kroll, who grew up with season tickets to the Giants games. Growing up in New Jersey. First down, and Hurst gets past Copeland. No, Copeland slowed him down, grabbed him for a moment. 8.50 remaining in the third quarter, 17-0 Phoenix. Copeland very quietly has had a heck of a game so far. He he got blamed a little bit for some of the bad plays on the defensive side of the ball last week for Washington. You know, they, they say, oh, we dropped the coverage, and Harper got behind him for a, a big touchdown. But today he's made some great hits, knocked down a few passes. His run support has been excellent, and that's what Washington needs, run support, because the Cardinals are going to try to pound the ball out. Second down and six. Send a roll in motion. To throw a lead block for Hurst. And Hurst again tripped early. Tim Johnson got a hold of him. Now you talk about you know pursuit, you talk about defensive responsibilities. Watch the defenders from Washington keep Phoenix guys in front of them. They're going to keep the Phoenix guy in front of them. They won't let a hole be created. And all Johnson does is once the running back goes by him, he throws off the offensive player and makes a tackle. Third and eight. I got to tell you, I know how that feels. <laughs> Everybody pulls back Before with the snap, ball. Ball start, number 61, five yards, still third down. 61, uh, the other 10 guys except for Cunningham, the center, were going in the wrong direction. For Joe Bugle's team, that is the first penalty of the game. A real important stat that I think a lot of people ignore a lot of times. Phoenix is 7 of 10 so far on third down. Seven of ten. That is an incredible conversion percentage. They have a long one here. Third and 13. High to Clark. And right off his fingertips. He was double teamed by Carter and Edwards. Well, you hear the term up top and underneath being covered. Here's Carter with the underneath, just mirroring Gary Clark. The ball's high. And up top, 27, Edwards has got him in the back. There was nowhere for Burline to lay this thing in. New snapper, Pat Beach. This is the first punt of the game. And a good snap to Camarillo. Beach was signed this week. Camarillo's boot to Mitchell at the 24. Excellent coverage downfield, and then he gets away. He gives it over to Green. And Daryl Green to the 47. Now they hand it off. 23 yard run back. 17 0 Phoenix. Outs. Wonderful weekend to walk around and visit some of the sites in our nation's capital. There's a few Redskins fans here at RFK and watching on the TV right now that would dispute this being a wonderful thing. Here's Ernest Biner. That'll brighten their outlook a little bit as he gets to the 40 of Phoenix. 13-yard pass play. Last year, the Cardinals beat the Redskins at Phoenix. But the oddity about that, Phoenix trailed 17 to nothing at halftime. And Joe Bugle said, I made the point to my team, don't panic, don't worry, we'll stick with our plan. That is what Washington always does. They always stick with their plan. They've always been strong at adjusting. They've got to be extra strong right now. There's Mitchell diving for about three. It's, it's funny to say this, but one thing that Washington hasn't done offensively is finish off their possessions, where a team let's say like a Phoenix or like a Tampa that has gotten things going in the past, drive five, six, seven plays, they haven't been able to finish off their drives. Today, Phoenix, Phoenix has finished off their drives, and Washington hasn't. They've always found a way to mess something up. 540 remaining in the third quarter. Second and seven. Seven. 
Ron Middleton to the 26th. And Kerry Conklin's getting a good combination. A little running, short passes to the receivers, a little short dump to the tight end. This is a good, consistent drive so far. It must finish with a touchdown. Cannot have another turnover at this point. Sanders and McGee lined up to the left. They bring out McGee on first down. There's Mitchell out of the backfield. Mitchell spinning inside of the 10. Mike Jones chased him down, but 18 yards for the Redskins. One of the great things about being an offensive coach, I think, is when you have these type of weapons, you say, if I can flip out the ball and get at least one blocker like Ray Brown out in front of my guy to hit John Booty like that, I know Mitchell can make a bunch of yards because he's got the ability to break at least a couple of tackles. Nice play by Ray Brown, 67. Four plays, 44 yards, moving quickly and with ease. First and goal and play action, roll out, back of the end zone, touchdown Washington. Ricky Sanders. I've never seen a receiver that didn't want the ball every play, but here's a receiver that's saying, give it to me, give it to me. It's six. You're right, Ricky. It's six. Chip Miller, good for the 204th consecutive time. 17-7. Four minutes to go, third quarter. Watch, you got the motion going this way. You got the coverage coming this way. And you got Sanders open for six that way. Check it out. Who's got you, Ricky? Who's got you? They still don't know. Low Miller booms it seven yards deep. And the Cardinals will start from the 20. Gary Conklin has thrown his second career touchdown pass and the Redskins within 10. As expected. Well, the crowd came alive after that last touchdown, after the first score of the day for the Redskins. And what will the Cardinals now do offensively? They have to do the same thing they've been doing for the rest of this game. They have got to get the ball to the receivers. They have got to have an effective running game. Don't change anything. If they get conservative, if they start running out the clock with 3.54 to go in the third quarter, they will lose this football game. Washington will find a way to come back and beat them if they don't just get first downs and control the football. They're saying now that Rippon has a sprained medial collateral ligament, and they've already scheduled an MRI for tomorrow to determine the severity of that injury. RFK is alive. First down for the Cardinals. Berline almost intercepted. Daryl Green had a great shot at it. So Gouveia. did A.J. Johnson. Govea had a shot at it. Heck, Richie Pettibone had a shot yeah. at that one. Everybody with a defensive interest on this side of the line had a shot at it. There's A.J. There's Ricky Pohl touch it. Daryl Green touches it. Kirk Ovea face massages it. One, two, three, four. To the ground. Second down and 10. And the Cardinals moved. This crowd has rattled them. Before this half. Number 64, five yards, full second down.
Big test for Burline in this offense with this kind of a crowd. And don't worry, they're quiet now, but when they get up back over that ball, they'll go nuts. Real key, don't make a mistake. That's exactly what they're trying to get you to do. Second and 15. There's the down clock. Burline zings it. Johnson on the coverage. Gary Clark, but not enough. Not even close to a first down. It'll be third and about eight. But you gotta like it. We talked about that swagger in Burline's walk. Here's a swagger on a pattern. You need a big play, you go to Gary Clark. Working against A.J. Johnson, drives him off and comes back. Jim, it wasn't a first down, but it was a positive gain for the Cardinals. Now Burline has the confidence to ignore this crowd. That's the seventh ball thrown to Gary Clark. He's caught five. Oh, a timeout by the Cardinals, and they have only one remaining. They've used two here in the third quarter as the Redskins are coming back. Great time for Richie Pettibone to go on the offensive here on a third down. Bring a blitz. A blitz operated effectively could bring you a touchdown. Third and seven. Gets it up to centers. And he's down at the 17. Al Noga got Larry centers. Monty Coleman put the pressure on Burline. You talked about the pressure. Here it comes out here. Monty Coleman on the way outside. Here he comes right now, working against centers. Leaps the block, gets Burline. Heads up play by Burline, kind of shuffling that ball to center. So. Beach, a little high on the snap, and Camarillo got it away. Fair catch by Mitchell at the 40. That looked like it had prospects of being blocked. Johnny Thomas came flying through toward Camarillo. Well, Thomas had been diverted far enough up the field, he'd lost his angle on the kicker's foot. He could have hit the kicker real easy, but he couldn't have got his foot. And I got to guess right now, if a guy came free, Joe Bugle's talking to maybe the guy that did it. Coaches, yes. get in your face if you're a snapper or if you miss a block on a punt team in a heartbeat. First down, Redskins. Reggie Brooks, blocker in front. Somersaults to the 47. As we near the two minute mark, two minutes to go in the third quarter. In this half, the Redskins took the open, took the second half kick and threatened before being picked off in the end zone by John Booty. Second time they had it, they drove easily for a touchdown, their first of the day. Well, they've had a Jekyll and Hyde performance for the last two sets. First time interception, second time touchdown. Which one's this one? That was through the hands of Ron Middleton. Well, the Redskins picked up only three first downs in the opening half. Uh, but in this quarter, 109 yards. Well, that's total yards. 109 total yards after only 57 in the first half. Third and three. With the catch. Bounces off of Booty and Oldham brings him down at the 40. I don't care what they say. They say he's 36. He can't get deep. They say he's four string or four number four receiver. You give me this guy every day of the week. He is going to find a way to get you some positive yards, and he's going to find a way to make you a winner. Art Monk with three catches today. Ernest Biner. Tackled at the 40 by Freddie Joe Nunn. We mentioned about Garrison Hurst kind of hesitating. We just saw a veteran get 
get his blocking kind of stuffed up in front of him. He had nowhere to go. He couldn't help but hesitate on that one. Final 30 seconds of the third quarter. Mo Elowanibi is out of the game. And Jacoby has replaced him. Here's Ernest Biner to the 31 yard line. It'll set up third and short for Washington. A good possession so far at the end of this third quarter for the Redskins. A lot of poise and good play selection. Well, that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Phoenix 17, Washington 7. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. We're back in Washington, D.C., where the Redskins have beaten the Phoenix Cardinals 14 straight years at RFK Stadium. But the Cardinals struck early on a punt return by Johnny Bailey a field goal with 53 yards by Greg Davis and a touchdown run by Ron Moore 17 to nothing at the half but the Redskins have come back Ella Wanibi is out with a hamstring pull on third and two Mitchell is near the first down we'll see where they spot it Redskins with a touchdown in the third quarter on a pass play to Ricky Sanders And that's enough for a first down. Jim, good teams find a way to win. Teams that end up being bad teams usually find some way to lose. Phoenix right here has to prove to themselves they know how to win. That means causing a veteran beauty like Washington to give up the ball and make a mistake. Of the 28, Conklin on first down. Sanders wide open at the 15 and out of bounds near the 12. And a nice job by Conklin. Just lobbing this ball into a spot that's open to a receiver he knows can get us some yards once he catches it. And this Redskin offense is right now hitting on all the cylinders they need to hit on. They're very effective. And Conklin is proving he can lead this offense right now. He looks very cool. First down. Conklin wanting to go near the end zone. No, to the seven. Monk. First and goal to go for Washington. Conklin had two career pass attempts in the NFL before today. Yes, a four-year veteran, but he spent a couple of those years on injured reserve. His first ever touchdown pass in the NFL happened in a game last year against Phoenix. One of his two passes went for a score. Now he looks very poised to bring the Redskins within a field goal. Ryan Mitchell, no game. Eric Swan pushed him back. You saw that draw play get stuffed up. There's a few words between Mitchell and Nunn. The one player you can't allow for on a draw is a safety. Chuck Cecil, 26, coming in from the right. Right there, see him? You don't allow for a blocker. You count on the linemen. You count on the linebackers. But if you've got a, a safety that can make that play, you can stop it. Washington has got third down. They can't afford to go for it on fourth. they got to get it here. Third down and four. Conklin back to the other side and Sanders can't hold on. Now they'll attempt the field goal to bring him within seven. Watch this. Is this ball tipped a little bit? It looked a little wobbly when Sanders was getting it. No, it's just sort of an end over end pass. But they're used to those in Washington. It wasn't exactly a spiral, but. Sonny Jurgensen <laughs> yes, right. made a living out of throwing balls like that for touchdowns there. <laughs> Billy Kilmer did Billy throw Kilmer, a, a, a real tight spiral. Here's 23-yard boot. Mo Miller brings him within seven. 
12-28 remaining in the game. Ten unanswered for the Redskins, and they're right back in it. Well, the Redskins kept it for about five minutes. They had it 11 plays, 55 yards, and end up with a field goal. 23-yard kick by Low Miller. 17 to 10, Phoenix. Johnny Bailey returned the opening kick near midfield and got the Cardinals enthused early. And also had a punt return for a touchdown in that first quarter. Very simple possession, Jim, for Phoenix coming up here. First downs and taking time off the clock aren't enough. Phoenix needs points here to stem the flow of momentum a little bit on Washington. They've got to get outside of seven points. I wonder if Berline and Bugle feel what everybody else does in this stadium. You can feel the Redskins coming. If you're on the field, you can feel them, you can smell them, you can hear them. They're coming. Berline's kick, short. Bailey from the 11. Look at Johnny Bailey out to the 30-yard line. He is having an incredible afternoon. Alvoid Mays made the tackle. And the game summary, Mark Rippon injured in the second quarter, a knee injury will be examined tomorrow to find out how bad it is. A punt return for a score by Bailey. And the Redskins have owned this half. They talk about the problems the Redskins offense had in the first half. This half, Phoenix, two first downs, 18 total yards. Ron Moore. Only one yard. By the way, Morton Anderson earlier in the game today against Atlanta set the all-time NFL record 25 straight field goals made without a miss, but he's just missed one here in the third quarter. And he missed it from 21 yards, we're told. Oh, he's not used to being that close. Usually Jim yeah. Barr in that offense put him out around 50. That's right. Uh, let's check that now. It is a 41-yard miss by Anderson. Second down and nine. Clark's wide open. Clark to the 48. I like that call. Got a Cardinal down on the field. It's Luis Sharp, but Gary Clark, you go to him. You need a big play. The offense isn't going good. They did it in the first quarter, they did it in the second quarter. They couldn't do it in the third, but they start off in the fourth, getting the man that should have the ball on a pass, the ball. Three-time Pro Bowler Louis Sharp hobbles to the sideline and is replaced by number 62, Ben Coleman, the rookie from Wake Forest. Second round pick. First down for Phoenix. Moore moves it across midfield to the Washington 49. Take a look at this on the outside. Watch Gary Clark up top. Looks like he's a little, a little gimpy. But you know what? Is he hobbling? Or is he ready is to he go long? <laughs> yeah. Or is he saying, I hope they're watching me? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go deep, right? Gee, I'm hurt, I'm hurt, I'm gone. <laughs> Sounds like the same thing. Second down and seven. Irvine, tough pass. Boy, the Redskins had a shot at it. Kurt Duvea, he was thinking pick an open field intended for Ricky Prohl. And I watched Gary Clark on that last play, and he jogged through that route. I mean, literally jogged through the route. And I mean, if that's if that's as fast as he can run, he shouldn't be in the yeah, game. Yeah, no, this not, he's not helping you at all. And this is a situation. I mean, if you don't have a Gary Clark, if he can't go full speed, then you have to go to a Ricky Pro or a Randall Hill. But normally, this would be Gary Clark all over on this kind of situation on third and medium. Third and seven. Burlines pass. Great catch by Randall Hill. 
Oh, by the fingertips, his first catch of the day in celebration time. Here it is one more time, and this is the wide receiver. He's got the reputation of being able to get on you deep, but intermediate passes he's had a bit of a problem with. One thing he has no problem with are his hands. This guy, when he's extended, when he's jumping, when he's doing the hard ones, he will hold on to a football. Remember, Daryl Green even talked about how he was surprised how little Phoenix goes to Randall Hill. First down and run more. Off left tackle to about the 25. Shane Collins hit him first. Ben Coleman is still in there at left tackle. This is a reworked Cardinal offensive line from a week ago. Ernest Dye, their rookie first rounder, stayed home with uh, a knee injury. And there's Ben Coleman. In for Louis Sharp on this series. Seventh play of the drive, second and eight. Quickly to Prohl. It's away from the first tackler and dives to the 19. 8.50 remaining in the game. And Phoenix really hasn't come out of things. Joe Bugle and his offensive staff are calling a very good game. There has been no panic on the Phoenix sideline. There has been no panic on the Washington sideline. Joe's telling Steve Berline, do what you did well for the first half. Make your percentage passes. Get the ball in the receiver's hands. Let them do something with it. Third down and two. Ron Moore won't get it. But a field goal right now would be so valuable with, well, under eight minutes remaining. It helps to go up ten. Snaps have been an adventure in Phoenix. Connie Kawhi, the, the former snapper, had a problem on the field goals, had a problem on the punts. They've now got Pat Beach in doing the, doing the snapping. Berline will hold it. I know they haven't kicked it, Jim, but I really didn't like that play call on a third down. A little dive in there. They should have thrown it. It was working too good. 37, 37 yard kick. Davis drills it. And the Cardinals lead by 10 with 7.31 remaining. There is a flag on the field. Hold on a minute before you post the three. Holding number 97. Oh, my. So they'll have to try it again. Well, we've seen him. We've seen him uh, snap or seen him kick a 53 yarder. Now he's going to get himself a chance to uh, get one over from a lot further away than he just did at 37. He made the 53 yarder in the first quarter, matching a career long, setting a Cardinal record. This is a 47 yard try. Good snap. Good hold. Missed it left. Jim Nance with Randy Cross at RFK. The Redskins will try to drive and tie this game with a touchdown. 7.26 remaining. Conklin up top. And oh. Ricky Irvins was the intended target. And Chuck Cecil was on a headhunt. Chuck's holding that left arm. That's either a shoulder or he got a stinger in that neck. And you can only wonder how many times this guy's got to get stingers the way he beats on people. Nice job by Wallerstadt tipping that ball. Oh, oh. oh my goodness. Oh, man. That was a complete face tackle, and that is the defensive back in a little bit of pain. Michael Zordich has replaced him in the secondary. Second and ten. Flag down in the area of offensive holding. Probably will bring this pass back to Biner. 
Personal foul, number 30, a chop block. Half a distance to the goal. Repeat second down. A chop block called on Brian Mitchell. Chuck Cecil is still trying to shake off that jarring hit, but he's back into the field, into the lineup for the Cardinals. Chuck Cecil is a money player, and this is a money player's time of the game. When you have a defense that has to stop another team that has got something going, you need your Chuck Cecils in the ball game. So back him up to the 14-yard line, second and 25. Conklin to McGee. And Bankston came up to make the play. Dropped back, actually. And joined Oldham on the hit. Third and long for the Redskins with 6.30 to go in this game. And now it's gamble time for Fritz Shermer and the Phoenix defense. You do one or two things. You soften up and don't give them a first down. Or you do what a Richie Pettibone and some of the top defenses in this league do. You attack. You go after that quarterback and make him make a mistake. Third and 15. Conklin's pass. Another Cecil blow on the receiver. That was to Ron Middleton. Cecil and his teammates now come over. That's the kind of leadership that the Cardinals have been missing in recent years. Every mom in America whose kids play Pop Warner see plays like this and go, you're not playing for another couple of years. But this, I got to tell you, is how a safety oh, gets in the Pro Bowl. You want to be all pro? You want to be in the Pro Bowl? Well, the great thing about that, too, from Cecil's standpoint, is just a couple of plays before. Oh, same guy. He's almost knocked out of the game on one of his own hits. Same guy couldn't move his arm. He is incredible. The money player. You got to have him in. 6-14. That's what you said, Randy. Good call. 6-14 remaining. And Roby. Another one without great hang time. And Bailey spins away and is tackled at the 37. Well, hats off to Chuck Cecil as we head to a break. 17-10, Cardinals. Chuck's not the one with his hat off, Jim. I know. <laughs> Chuck Cecil on the prowl. Just took the hat off, the helmet off. Ron Middleton, 270-pound line or tight end. And uh, when he gets ready for a game on Sunday, they say it's something to behold in the locker room. It stuns some players. Well, I mean, hits like that scare wide receivers and tight ends. Louis Sharp, his own offensive tackle, said, "I thought he was having a breakdown." Talking about, he says, "I don't know what's wrong with you." That was in the locker room before the Philadelphia game last week. Louis Sharp, by the way, has come back now onto the field. He's returned at left tackle. First down to the key, Jim. First down. Six minutes to go, and on first down, Garrison Hurst holding on to the football to the 39. Got the same score going between Philadelphia and Green Bay with the pack up seven. Hurst today, 19 rushes for 48 yards. This is the situation with Joe Bugle and the Cardinals. If they were throwing a high percentage of the four in their passing game, they gotta they gotta throw dead solid locks here. If it's not gonna be completed, throw it in the ground. They need first downs to take time off the clock. Second and eight. There's Hurst darting through a small opening and getting within about a yard of the first. Tim Johnson tackled him. And we approach five minutes to go in this game. By the way, we mentioned Greg Davis's wife had a child yesterday. Keith Rucker became a father yesterday as well. So congratulations. See, you notice though, Rucker had to get on the plane and come with the team. They let the kicker stay home in, in, in Phoenix and let him come last night on a red eye. Got here at eight this morning. All moms and babies doing great. Third and one. And they're going to throw for it. Batted down by Carl Banks.
They were looking for tight end Derek Ware. It's a nice call, I think, by the Cardinals. I think you got to throw it here. You've already proven in crucial situations your line isn't getting it done for you in the short yardage. You throw a percentage pass. This is a percentage pass. But this is also a reason why Carl Banks has still got a lot of ball left in him. Rich Camarillo waiting for the snap from Pat Beach. Good snap. Plenty of time Camarillo with a gorgeous kick. Sailing high into the air and a soft bounce inside the 10. So the Redskins will start. Well, we'll call it at the 10 yard line. Well, this is a terrific game at RFK. And next we have the men's final for you. That's Cedric Pialine from France. He's never won a tournament as a pro. And the 15th seed will take on Pete Sampras, the number two seed in the men's final. That's next here on CBS. What a Cinderella story and an upset filled tournament at the U.S. Open. But no less of a Cinderella story here, Jim, with the past history of Joe Bugle and these Cardinals to come in and play the way they are now is incredible. Here's Conklin to Middleton. He did not hold on. He wanted to know where Cecil was. He, he says, I know where the ball is. Where's 26? Mo Elowanibi is back in now. He had set out some of the second half. Elowanibi with a staph infection and in the hospital until yesterday. Staph infection on his uh, elbow. And we talked about Cecil being the money guy for the Cardinals. The money guys for the Redskins are Sanders and Monk. Get the ball in their hands. They're going to run it. Second and ten. Wide open room for Brian Mitchell. And a first down for Washington. And we have four minutes remaining in the game. No panic in these Redskins. They're running their offense. They're doing things their way. And a nice job. And look at that. The high knees. Looks almost like a Roger Craig when he gets those knees up that high. And he has the, the presence when he starts feeling a crowd. You saw him wrap that ball up with both arms. Ten carries, 32 yards for Mitchell. There's a first down pass play. And they go back to Mitchell, but short yardage is all. And we have an update back in New York. Let's take you there to Greg Hubble. All right, Jim, at Green Bay, the Eagles have pulled even with the Packers. Watch Randall Cunningham roll out on third and 10 and launches one. 40-yard touchdown pass to Victor Bailey. Just over four minutes to play at Lambeau Field. They're tied at 17. Back to RFK, Jim and Randall. Well, they went to number 82 for a quick six. Guy who used to wear that number, Mike Quick, for the Eagles. Here on second and seven, a big sack by Ken Harvey. Are well, you talking about a quick fix, a quick sack, a quick everything else? Here is a pure quick move by Harvey on Elowanibi. Just a see you later slap on the left shoulder of Elowanibi, and he's gone, and Conklin's down. Ken Harvey with three sacks in this game and a forced fumble and a timeout called by Washington leaving the Redskins with two three minutes seven seconds remaining in this game so far a very flat performance I think from the Washington Redskins coming into this game so far a very inspired performance by these Phoenix Cardinals everybody that's had to make plays for the Cardinals at one time have made them offensively Clark's been there Hurst has been there Berline's been there Defensively, the front four has been stuffing up some runs. Harvey's been getting sacked, and Cecil's been smacking. Third and 13 coming up for Richie Pettibone. And you don't want to give the football back to the Cardinals with only three minutes remaining in this game. What will he do here? Well, Jim, the hard, one of the hardest things in football to learn is how to finish off a victory. Anybody can get close. You've got to learn how to finish off a victory. You got to stuff them on defense. You take the ball away on offense. You run away and hide. Third and 13. Pass to Monk, and he let him too much. And there are actually Cardinal defenders in the area. I think would have prevented Monk from getting a first down had he made the catch. I think so too. And I believe Michael Bankston, defensive end, got a little hand on that ball and deflected it 
and just broke the concentration of Monkey. You don't get one hand on it. Reggie Roby returns. Big average today, but his punts have had a little hang time. Got to have a lot, a lot of hang here. Get your coverage a chance to get under the ball. Better this time. Fair catch called by Bailey back at the 28. 256 remaining. This is that last third down play. Watch Bankston, 63. They're taught, defensive lineman, get up your hands. Here goes the left hand, just tips it. Without that little extra spin on the ball, I think Monk's got it, but you made a good point, Jim. There are plenty of defenders, I think, to stop Monk from getting that first down. Bankston on the bench. He was in our meetings yesterday with the Cardinals and in there with Mike Jones and Eric Swan. And we asked him, how do you guys like that moniker, the young guns, as they call you? They, they, they liked it, but they said, what's going to happen when we get old? What are they going to call us? <laughs> Three minute offense time. Run the ball and run out the clock. My goodness. Looking for the pass play. Gary Clark was the man that Berline was looking for. But he slides down to the 31. Well, the smartest thing Berline could have done there was run and not throw and stop the clock. 14 straight by the Redskins who have now called their second time out. 14 straight here against the Cardinals in the last three years, 106 to three. Joe Bugle said, challenges guys, you know, a lot of people that in life don't have the kind of opportunity you have to overcome a major challenge. Rewards, we might get bronzed if we win this game. Step up and do it. And he's had some guys step up and do it. It's gonna be a very happy man if in the next two minutes and 44 seconds, this team can hold on to the ball and hold on to this win. And on the other side, Richie Pettibone's got to be very disappointed by the effort of his Redskins here today. Pettibone actually recruited Joe Bugle to the Redskins. Bugle and Pettibone had been assistants with the Houston Oilers under Bum Phillips. Pettibone then came up to coach with the Redskins and talk. Bugle actually slipped the word in to Joe Gibbs. Let's go after this guy, Bugle. And he was a longtime assistant here, was Bugle during the 80s. Second and seven. Hurst to the outside. Cuts back to the inside to prevent going out of bounds. And he's about a yard shy of the first. You know, sometimes players complain about not getting or getting called for holding penalties. Watch 64 Cunningham working on Charles Mann. Watch his right hand. You're going to see right there. See that, that tug? Man couldn't pursue, couldn't get outside. Of losing by an incredible mistake. You know, this, this ball's going to be snapped. This can go down to two minutes. And something terrible has to happen. Look at those faces on the Redskins side. They're not going for the shoulder pads. They're not going for the legs. They're not going for the arms. As soon as this ball snapped, they're going for the ball. Third and a yard. Hurst has it. First down, Phoenix. And tackled near the 50. They have struggled for two years finding a way to get the tough yard. And they got it today when they had to have it. And this is probably the first time today they've had a desperate situation on the run. What do they get? They get some fine blocking off the right side of that offensive line with Cunningham and Lance Smith and that whole group doing job nice lead block also by Ron Moore making the kick out block so we've reached the two minute warning the Redskins have no timeouts remaining Cardinals lead by seven this game is presented by authority of the National Football League and the CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of CBS the Washington Redskins National Football League is prohibited. Phoenix with a new set of downs. Two minutes remaining, and you see the Redskins without any timeouts. One thing that will not be prohibited is Joe Bugle and his Phoenix Cardinal team doing some serious high-fiving and celebrating because all we got left now are flops on the ball. A 
couple of more snaps like that and this will be official. What a shot in the arm for this team and this organization in Phoenix. A, a team that almost probably could have won last week. I mean, looked bad, but still probably could have won. Came in here to a place they have not won in 14 years. What do they do? Oh, all they do is come in here and physically take the Redskins style football to the Redskins. Give the Cardinals credit. You don't have to downplay the Redskins as much as I think you have to give the Cardinals credit for having the poise to do this. Second down snap. Cardinals had lost eight straight on the road against their NFC East foes and had lost 14 of their last 15 road games. And yet you had the sense, not necessarily with the Cardinals, but just around the league that after they lost their opener to the Eagles, that people are already saying, well, they're going to be 0-2. It's going to be the same old story for Phoenix. Well, this morning when we saw these guys, Greg Davis is the only one with his euphoric smile because he was the new papa. He had a new member of the family. There's going to be about 80 euphoric smiles on a charter back to Phoenix tonight. This is just what this team needed. They will not have to snap it again. This game is over. Joe Bugle comes back to Washington, where he was a longtime assistant. It's the biggest win of his career as a head coach of the Phoenix Cardinals. Each team walks off the field one and one. Richie Pettibone and the Redskins next week will be at Philadelphia while the Cardinals play their home opener against the Dallas Cowboys. The question for the Redskins has to be, Jim, how is Mark Rippon's knee? If Rippon's knee is going to make it, the Redskins have a, a real good chance of having a great year and still having a successful season. If Rippon's out, I think it's a serious problem. Joe Bugle said, I've been on that field 2,000 times at RFK Stadium. There's no mystique about it. We can win here. And they've done it. Chuck Cecil with a punishing hit in the fourth quarter that kind of got the Cardinals' head, heads back into it. 17 points in the first half for the Cardinals. All the scoring in the second half, the 10 points belong to the Redskins. And that's a good... Good sign. He's walking fine. We're going to send you back now to New York. Here, the Cardinals have beaten the Redskins 17 to 10.